So, hello everybody and uh, welcome to our colloquium. It's my pleasure to introduce Sashko. No, I don't know how to introduce you, but maybe we can make a short uh, yeah. uh, history together. So I met you first time, I think it was in 2016. 16, yes. Yeah, in I still remember it was in Innsbruck it, at the airport yes. where I first interviewed you. Yes. And I was not convinced, I was nagging, <laughs> oh, shall I take him or shall I take him not? And you, you are one of my best hirings ever, I can Ooh, say. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we... Uh, uh, took different ways at some point, you know, because that's life. And then again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but we re reconvene now. Mm -hmm. So for those who don't know Sashko, he was the man in the background uh, for a person you know, which is called Roland. He was the main advisor of Roland. And if Roland has to thank someone, something for where he is right now, I think it's you. Um, we it's did a great a work there where we simulated clouds using, so we had the problem that cloud simulators are too complex, too many mm -hmm, parameters, mm -hmm. and we had this great idea, let's simulate clouds with one parameter, yes, yeah, with only one. which was the noise. Yeah. And it was enough. <laughs> it was enough, and we published that in IEEE transactions in parallel distributed systems. And what happened since then? Yeah, as you know, I always follow, you know, the career of the person I, I work with. And in your case, I don't know, I don't know if you see it this way, but something happened about one and a half years ago. You, you somehow clicked yes. in your head and you moved to the next level. Yeah. So um, he's producing since about one and a half years a pipeline of extremely good works. Yes. Uh, recently, we even published a paper on simulating serverless function, with which we, it's yes. our current cooperation, which we will uh, also we will see present today. Have, yes, this published in extremely prestigious conference, ACM Symposium of, on Cloud Computing, yeah. arguably the best conference in clouds out there. And... Uh, 30 papers out of 158 accepted. Yeah, yes. and the conference is not ranked. Yeah, yes, yes. I don't know why, but it's not ranked, uh, Josef. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, probably it's a star. Mm -hmm. So, Sashko, we are yeah, thanks. eager to hear you. Thank you. So I will summarize my work in the last <laughs> three years, let's say, but yeah, the output last year and the year before was really good. Maybe the reason is because I switched the group so that I continue to work from the previous work and in the new topics, uh, I extended my topics only. I, I, I show you now. So I present engineering serverless workflow applications in federated FAS. FAS is function as a service. Uh, how many of you are familiar with FAS? Uh, or shall I give more details, uh, just few few minutes? Uh, okay, no, I, I introduce. So function as a service. I, I mentioned a few words so, so that you get uh, uh, better in the topic. So a few words about me, <laughs> Rado already mentioned, uh, and uh, our collaboration also with, with uh, Klagenfurt. Then challenges, what are the challenges in function as a service uh, uh, and uh, multiple uh, function as a service uh, cloud providers or federation of uh, FAS? Then uh, what or which research questions I'm working on? I grouped into four research questions. I go to each of them and then uh, mentioned what is the challenge and what are the options for now and what is our uh, advance in this area and then conclusion and still further work. Uh, so from June this year, I'm in uh, assistant professor in quality engineering group. And I think with this, I extend now not only from distributed systems to see the cloud, but uh, also from a quality engineering perspective. Before that, I was six years in uh, as a postdoctoral university assistant at DPS group. Uh, this is my publication list from this year, mainly the topics are federation of clouds, uh, simulation, and how to, next step is how to make the life easier of developers so that uh, 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 we can code only once, run everywhere with any cloud service. So in general, how to hide the cloud from the developers. And the main idea is, can we code the, the, the applications without uh, bothering about the cloud uh, uh, APIs, SDKs, whatever. And this is also our collaboration with uh, uh, Professor Prodan and uh, with uh, Draghi. Uh, several papers we have, and I think this is what, what uh, you mentioned. This is the paper, really powerful, I would say. I'm really proud of that Robert, paper. Yes, yes, that's, <laughs> that's the, 
that's the, the simulation with one parameter. And I, I would mention also some ideas which uh, we are still working on with the uh, uh, Cardio HPC project. That is the project where we simulate, uh, uh, w first we analyze the performance of, of cloud providers. How can, they be how can we use uh, uh, serverless computing in uh, 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 health? Okay, now let's see the challenges. Just now to first to mention, to introduce. So what is fast function as a service? Uh, cloud providers offer uh, an option to upload a code in a, in a form of a function and then we don't care about resources, anything. Uh, when we call that code, that code is executed, I don't know, some two numbers, or we take some number, some measurements from sensors, and then we want to do some sh short work at, uh, 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 over that uh, data, and the, the code is in the form of a function. Function receives inputs, uh, uh, returns outputs, one or multiple outputs, usually with a JSON format, both uh, input and outputs. And then we can, all cloud providers offer uh, this service, function as a service. And now, uh, what is very nice is, if we invoke 10 times or 50 times, all 50 will be executed. We don't care about resource management. That's really nice. And what is also nice is, yes, we have multiple cloud providers. Each has their own uh, pricing scheme, uh, policy, uh, I don't know, uh, languages support. So more or less all languages are supported. And this means that we can run everywhere, we can compute everywhere, which is really nice. Are we free at last to run everywhere, not to be tightened to a single computer? But let's see whether it's really like this, because what the providers claim, run up to 1,000 functions in one region. If you want, we can scale more, but that scaling is not quite <laughs> accurate if you dive into the problem more. So what are the challenges? First, this is heterogeneous environment. Can we use all cloud at the same time? We can, but there are limitations and I mentioned now. So what are the problems since it's heterogeneous environment? How to deploy functions? The code should be sent to each uh, cloud provider. But we need to code this for each cloud provider. There are different uh, 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 handler functions, handler methods. Uh, uh, in, we need to code in a different way. Then how can we model how much will be the runtime of a function in Frankfurt, AWS, or Google Tokyo? How can we orchestrate uh, uh, multiple functions to make a, a, a more complex application? Usually a single function is not enough. We need to orchestrate more functions to, to do bigger, bigger uh, work. And how to optimize everything uh, if we measure we, we have to measure 10,000 places uh, with different memory, with different provider, different language, how to optimize uh, this and where to run all these applications. For, so for, for, I would say for full life cycle of, of the functions, I try to, to cover parts of this. So in, for the deployment, we got uh, uh, recently in October best paper in IEEE Cloud Summit. Then this is the paper which we have with, with uh, uh, Radu with, uh, for modeling, how can we estimate performance of, of serverless, of, of FAS. Then for orchestration, we have a language, how to abstract applications from resources. And then based on that, during runtime, we can optimize, decide uh, where to run. And also execution, this is also collaboration with Klagenfurt, how can we uh, run with resilience. So if a function fails, in, uh, in Frankfurt, run it in Tokyo on IBM, not on Amazon uh, Frankfurt. This, is, uh, this was managed in this paper. Now let's see the problems. Uh, I, I classified into two problems. One is uh, uh, vendor lock-in. So I mentioned we can select any cloud, any language, but that's nice. Let's say we selected Amazon, oops, and we selected Python. To, to code. And then Amazon offers Boto3 library, use Boto3 for each cloud service. It's really good. But then we are locked in Amazon. Then that code doesn't run on Google if we use their, their libraries. And then we have to use, for example, step functions to orchestrate uh, uh, multiple functions in, in a single uh, uh, application. 
or also to use S3, their S3. But maybe this is more expensive, this is maybe slower, so that's not uh, good. How can we uh, use, extend our um, uh, wishes, let's say, to run everywhere, really? So we are locked like my brother spared Harry. Okay, he is not locked always, to be honest. <laughs> he can fly at home. And that's really what we have in the cloud. We can fly within the cloud region or maximum uh, between regions of a single cloud provider. But is this enough? We would like to really fly everywhere across all providers due to better accuracy maybe. Maybe they have some service. Maybe Google has better accuracy, maybe better prediction. Maybe it's cheaper, maybe it's faster. And maybe more reliable, maybe for fault tolerance and so on. So let's see now the second problem. Uh, cloud providers uh, offer uh, uh, maximum scalability up to 1,000 functions. This means that if we run 1,001 function, then that last function should take two iterations, not only one. So for instance, if we run in Frankfurt, because it's closer to, to Austria, at least in networking, uh, Let's assume that the function needs 700 milliseconds. And then if we run 2,000 functions, they will finish in 1,400 second, milliseconds, uh, 1.4 seconds. And then maybe if in North Virginia we can run, there maybe it's one second. So it's not always go to the closer region, right? Or maybe in Tokyo also 1,200. What is interesting in Google in North Virginia is 300 milliseconds. These are roughly numbers, maybe it's 207. I, I make it for, for, for easier presentation. For example, Google doesn't need uh, authentication. They use a token and then once you authenticate with the token, 10 hours you can run without authentication. And then it's really faster, although it's far away. So how can we model all this? All this? Uh, why do we need this? If we run everything 50,000 functions in one region, it's better to spread. But this spreading, it's not easy. And now let's see our work and also in from others, not only our, I mean. So I split into two research goals. The first goal is abstraction. We have heterogeneity. Can we abstract at a higher level uh, our coding, our development, so that later, runtime system, the, the optimization, can decide where to run everything, but first to prepare the, the code so that it can really run everything, everywhere. So can we abstract federated FAS and develop functions, or in general, multiple functions together as a workflow, uh, as they run on a single computer? So can we hide the cloud? What is the main idea? I don't have USB, for example, if I plug in USB drive on, on the notebook and uh, I copy file from USB to hard drive or from hard drive to USB or from CD-ROM to, to, to hard drive, I simply use drag and drop. Can we use this approach in the cloud? Drag and drop. Code only once and then uh, drop it everywhere. That's, that's, the, that's what, what my target is. So the first challenge is portability. In order to move everywhere, I need portability. So how to abstract heterogeneous resources? In fast, maybe this is not accurate, but cloud providers call that resources. I prefer to call services, maybe. It's better. So can we abstract heterogeneous uh, services and resources, let's call them, and hide them from developers? So can we use a file not, uh, uh, not whether it's CD like in Unix or Linux, uh, uh, mount first the drive and then, then copy. No, we won't just drag and drop. So can we easily migrate functions and then run them everywhere? This is the first uh, uh, goal. What are the, the let's, let's bring you more, uh, let me bring you more in more detail uh, what is a workflow. So a workflow we can des describe as a set of functions as a DAG, directly uh, acyclic graph, where one function stores data somewhere and then next function or multiple functions read the, that data. And then compute and then again. So one workflow atop uses, can use multiple functions. And 
we would like the, those functions to be across different providers. Then each function can use backend as a service, a bus services, for example, OCR service. Give, give me uh, an image, I will return, or the cloud service returns the text. Or image recognition, I give the cloud service an, a, an image and it returns me uh, uh, confi with some confidence uh, faces. And uh, even happy, sad faces and so on. And then those bus services use storage also. So this hierarchy, can we mix like this different colors? That is my idea. At the moment we, we need AWS step functions, Lambda, AWS recognition, S sorry, S3, <laughs> this one, let's say. That is what we have at the moment, but we would like this dynamic uh, uh, option. For, th for the first step, what we took is, let's run everywhere first. Then, then we saw that the second problem, we ne someone needs to develop that. <laughs> Luckily, I was not, <laughs> but, but of course, we need to, to simplify the work. So each cloud provider limits us to run a, a workflow with their function. Amazon step functions with uh, Lambda, Google with uh, uh, cloud function. This was two years ago. Now, this year, Google, for example, introduced what we have already two years ago. Now they allow, and also Azure, they allow to run Google, uh, 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 HTTP, through HTTP requests, uh, functions of Amazon, let's say Google. But this was only now. And the first step was, let's move full workflow from, from one to another cloud provider. But then we said, wait, I want this function to run on Amazon, this on Google. That was not possible. And now with our XAFCL system, so AFCL is the language in YAML, and X is execute. <laughs> That's the, the code name. And then we can easily shuffle functions wherever we, we want. Of course, the precondition is to have functions there. Later I come how to make that also. Then with collaboration with Ragi, we did uh, fault tolerance as well. We said, okay, we run every, so fault tolerance is limited by cloud providers to their own region. You remember Harry can fly at home only. What we wanted, Okay, a function fails in Google, then I cannot run again in Google. So there is some limit and Google cannot uh, finish that function. Okay, move to IBM. This function failed, run two in parallel to improve the availability. That's also a nice feature to have. And we, we did this with uh, our language and uh, the uh, uh, engine. So how, how we did this, just to give you, dive, dive into the, the, the architecture. So we split the logic into three parts. First is extract the language. So we have a parser that parses the application. Regardless where we run, we don't care. Let's parse how many functions I need to run. And then once I reach, once the engine reaches, okay, you need to run function number 10, then where should I run that function? At this moment, I decide where to run. Okay, do I need to monitor that execution? If I need to monitor, start the exact monitor for that cloud provider and then use the, the invoker for that cloud provider. So we separated the logic from the application uh, uh, between the application and the resources. And then we can dynamically change per function whatever we want. With this, just to give you, for example, if we have a function, if we set up Minimum availability, 99.5. And then this function has availability, 99.89. Okay, we can run this as, al as alternative one. If this fails, then we run these two functions to reach, again, the same availability. If you see those individually have le lower availability, but if we increase, if we run both, then uh, we can achieve this availability, and so on. And then maybe these three will, will be omitted because we cannot achieve uh, higher availability. How we do this? In our language, for each function, we specify where we run that function. And then we change only this line. We don't change anything in the code. And I can specify alternative, retry two times, uh, run these two alternatives in Tokyo and in London. If that one fails, if, do, if both fail, then run these two. And this is done dynamically by the engine. 
Now the problem, the second problem was, uh, which I mentioned, is uh, scalability within a region, limited scalability. What, which test, we what is this? We executed 4,000 functions in one region. I think it was North Virginia. The function is doing only sleep one second and then finishes. So if we run 4,000 functions, what would be expected runtime if they can scale infinite? It should be one second. Oh. Sorry. It should be one second, but you see, more than seven seconds. Why? Because we cannot run all 4,000 in parallel. First, we have latency to call the functions. We need time. Then uh, we need to wait one second for 1,000 functions, then for the next 1,000, and so on. So we need four iterations, or instead of one second, it will finish in seven seconds. How can we <coughs> make this uh, executing, how can we execute this in, in parallel? So with, with our engine and with the language, if we have a parallel loop with 4,000 functions, we can split into four loops, or, or let's call it 2,000 functions. We can split two times 1,000, and then this runs in AWS Frankfurt, this runs in IBM Tokyo, and fine, we got the scalability. How can we do this? Only with by specifying uh, uh, a resource field in the YAML file. This is just standard YAML, so one function, another function, what is important? Data from this goes to this function, and then we call this dynamically. These are more complex workflows, just to see how they do. For example, uh, Monte Carlo uh, uh, approximation for pi, let's say. And this is parallel four. We can scale 12,000 functions we tested in one paper and uh, distribute across 12 cloud regions <coughs> of three providers. And another option is uh, this is good setup. We run from Innsbruck, for example, it doesn't matter. This is at the moment centralized a little bit. It's a weakness, let's call it, but it's fine up to now. So we can distribute and run functions in IBM Dallas, uh, North Virginia, Washington, and so on. And uh, they can, <coughs> one setup is what from our tests. This is, they can use uh, storage in different continents. And here comes the next problem, interoperability. If we want to move this function from Amazon to IBM or to Google, if we move that code here, if we are lucky that the code runs, if we are lucky, then that code will still access here. And if this, this is charged, this is not charged communication. This is charged and very lot. I don't know, hundred dollars for one execution for a workflow, just to, to see the cost. Otherwise here would be zero. Another issue is uh, uh, latency, very slow will be. So maybe we would like to use this storage, not this one. But this is Google, not S3. Then we have to change the code. And this is the second problem. What if the function uses cl uh, cloud, uh, uh, if the functions use cloud services? Then maybe we have to use this storage because data is here, fine. But in a workflow, if, if this function sends data to this function, then this intermediary ephemeral data we can store everywhere. And that therefore, we would like to do exactly that, to decide whether here or there. So here comes the second problem about interoperability. How to abstract backend services or cloud services, which are called by serverless functions, regardless where they are hosted? If, uh, so where, regardless where the functions are hosted, and also uh, regardless which service is used. So if I m can I move this here to still access this, or can I keep the function here and use this service? Both options are important. So here are an example. Can we use Google Cloud Storage in instead of Amazon S3 immediately without any change in the code? That, that would be really good feature to have. Or even more, what if we have chained uh, in, uh, calls, uh, chained, chained bus services? So what if we use uh, recognition, object vision, uh, which, uh, uh, access, which needs some image stored on Google uh, storage or Amazon uh, storage? 
So what, what would we need to do in this case? We need to cre create four functions. Let's say uh, if we want dynamically to select one of these four functions to access to any cloud storage, then we need four codes. Two on Amazon that access one to, to, uh, to uh, S3, one to Google Cloud Storage, and two functions on Google that access to Amazon S3 and access to uh, Google uh, Cloud Storage. And this is for download. Maybe for upload, maybe we would need more, but probably not. Uh, what if we have chain services? What if we need to use OCR or recognition? Then we need eight. Four on Amazon, four on, on Google that can access differently, use this service with S3 or Amazon service with the Google Cloud Storage. And how to make the life easier? I show, I will spend two minutes, let's say, to, to show you how homotety or how, how can we abstract uh, the problem to solve it easier. How can we do from this to this? We have two white knights and two black knights. How can we change, uh, replace their places by moving like in chess? So very small board, very less uh, options, but if you try, it needs 40 moves. And when I was a student, <laughs> stu other students came and help us three days, we cannot solve the problem. They would even find a solution, but didn't, fit, didn't write. <laughs> And then we, I asked one of my colleagues so that we were together on, on Olympiad in math and he found brilliant solution and I show you how to make the life easier. So if we number these cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we can see that three can go to four and two, two can go to three, I don't know, nine can go to ten and eight and so on. And then if we if we plot these together, we see this way. So very simple. And now, instead of knights, we can use kings. And now the problem is very easy. Okay, move the king uh, down, then three kings back, then uh, move the king here, and then white kings here, then uh, the black king down, then the white kings there, and then the black king goes left, and the two, two kings go left. So this is much simpler than the previous case. So can we make this uh, approach for the, for the developers so that can they develop king, uh, kings instead of knights? So, in, so instead of having here eight functions, can we co code only once and then deploy on two places and that's it? Let's see how or what is our approach. So can we hide cloud providers? So we want, this is Java developer, develop the, the code in Java, like you run, I don't know, Fibonacci, <laughs> Fibonacci numbers. You don't care about cloud there. You, you code only Fibonacci. So can the current state of the art, what is the goal is code once run everywhere. So with containers, if we have a container, we can port the container everywhere. But if that container uses inside some cloud services, then, then this doesn't work. So I would say this is code once start everywhere, but whether it will run, <laughs> we don't know. And my goal is to go with code once run everywhere with everything, with every service. So no matter where we run the function, no matter which cloud service we use, let's develop some libraries to make the lives easier, to, to work with kings, not with knights. And this even during runtime. So let's deploy the function only once and then dynamically select whatever we do, drag and drop, the, the concept of drag and drop. And this is what we want, applications and then some operating system and uh, which will hide the resources. This is what we have done already. So if we, of course it's, uh, it's for storage and uh, uh, AWS recognition and uh, Google Vision for now in Java, but uh, I started master thesis, three bachelor thesis, so that to increase the, the libraries for 
mainly we work with Google and Amazon, uh, uh, and uh, we extend now to uh, uh, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, so all libraries from different providers to integrate, uh, 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 I mean, sorry, to, to create library in, the, in specific language to hide the uh, services from cloud and offer a single interface to the developer. Let's see. Uh, we code the function only once. With the library, just to come here, with the library we offer a copy function, let's say. Copy source destination. If the source is Amazon, destination is local file system, what is this? From Amazon to the file function, download. If we upload from local to the storage to, to Google or from Google to Amazon, no change of the code, we change the inputs only. So here, just to go back, so we, we deploy the function only once and then give me u URL of the bucket. So I don't care if it is USB or CD drive, that's the idea. I see a bucket, not, not Amazon. I want to see a bucket and then the source I send the source as input to the function. I hit the function once with uh, S3, it will download from S3. Then I hit with this, it will download from Google. No code change. Moreover, with uh, uh, face recognition, recognition.detectFaces method, and then give me the path of the, of the image. Is it Google or Amazon? I don't care. In the background, the library will find this, it will parse this path and uh, then use storage library to, so this library uses this library to, uh, to find where is the file and what, what is then option. If the path is on S3 and we call, uh, here we, can, we have multiple overloads. So we can add, uh, I want really uh, Google Vision because it's better accuracy, for example. And then, then, okay, but the, the, the file is on Amazon S3 and you want to call it uh, Google. That's not possible today. But with the, this library it is. Download the file, move the file from Amazon to Google and then call Google service. That's what in the background is, is done. And this is still, uh, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> work in progress still. Because what we want now, uh, let's, let, let me say this. Uh, uh, there are some libraries which exist, let's say Apache Lib Cloud in Python. The problem is this goes up, so Amazon is the, at the top level and then S3 is down. So you need to select first the provider and then the service. No, we want the opposite way. We want the service to select. So I want to select face recognition and then I select which provider is. And that's, that's the main innovation in, in this approach because with with, uh, with that approach, if we select Amazon and then test three, we have to change the code still. And with this approach, we have only two functions, one code, two deployments, not eight codes, eight deployments, but one code, two deployments. And what we tested, for example, is in Frankfurt, it's faster to run Lambda function with Google Vision in Frankfurt when the image is on on uh, S3. Maybe this doesn't work always. Maybe, you know, it's networking, maybe it's changed, but this was really nice to, 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 to determine. And uh, another benefit is we uh, using this library for storage. If we have a workflow which receives three files and we distribute files in Oregon, in Frankfurt, and in, I think, for si uh, Singapore, then the lib if we run in each of these three regions, wh where, where shall we run functions if data is distributed? We need some scheduler. And we developed uh, brute force to check all options. And we, find out, we found out that run next functions in North Virginia, although there is no data, that would be uh, for some functions, not for all, some functions, and the others were in Frankfurt. So that was, and uh, with this we achieved uh, less uh, uh, runtime. Now the next, uh, the next uh, challenge is uh, optimization. Now since we are able to develop and code only once, now let's utilize this. Let's uh, now uh, change 
let's decide this one or that one to send and shall we color the function uh, yellow or orange, uh, orange or blue or maybe uh, also color this uh, orange or run on Amazon. Now, can we create, how, how can we optimize? First, we need to learn about the system. And this is what we did with, with, with Radu. Uh, we need, uh, how can we model fast? How can we learn the, the system and then apply it for any kind of, uh, of function? So can we create a no learning unified system model and optimize applications in federated clouds? Which parameters are important? First, we dived into this. And then, which features are important to, to model? And now, this is still work in progress. My target wi will be, if I have a function in Tokyo, can I estimate how much time would I need to deploy the function in Frankfurt and run it there? Will it be faster this way, or still run in Tokyo since I have the function there? This, I, I come to at the end uh, uh, with this model, but that would be the, the final target of this uh, uh, idea, of this research. What is the state of the art in modeling? We can run everywhere and learn behavior. That's correct, but it's really ex expensive, right? It's, we need to, we need to run a million uh, options. We can use some machine learning to learn, but still we need time series. We need a lot of executions. So instead of that, can we find something between functions and regions? So, uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Can we find some similarities between regions within the region and so on? For this, we define two types of similarities. The same function, the same code, we increase the memory inside the same region. And this we call siblings because it runs the same code, but it uses more memory or less memory. And then twin, uh, we have a function 128 megabytes, the same memory, the same uh, environment in Tokyo. And that's twins. They run in the same, uh, in the same uh, uh, environment. Here, not exactly, because uh, this has more memory. So with this approach, we would like, if we run this function, to know how much would be this and how much would be this, uh, how, what will be the execution time. For this reason, we tried first to analyze full runtime of the function. So we invoke the function from Innsbruck, let's say, to Frankfurt. We need time to move to, to reach Frankfurt, then response uh, should return to, to us, and the function runs. So first we split to two parts. This is all overheads that exist and execution time of function. Mainly related work analyzes only this, not this. And for federation, we need this really. Then the next step was, okay, let's analyze what is this? How can we split this? We determined five different overheads. Session overhead, first execution is always lower than the others. 500 milliseconds is needed for this. For our engine, maybe for other en engine would, would be lower or more, it doesn't matter. Then authentication, it depends whether I am authenticate in Frankfurt or North Virginia. In North Virginia is much longer than in, in Frankfurt. Then network latency, of course, easy. Then fast overhead. We send the request and the cloud provider will not run immediately. <laughs> Why? They have the internal schedule policy. So this is uh, latency. And concurrency, if we run 10 functions or 1,000 functions, 10 function will, will finish, let's say, in 1.1 second. 1,000 functions, the same functions will finish in three seconds, not in it one second. That's another concurrence. So for more, you can check in the paper. These are equations. Okay, you can skip, I will skip. So now, how can we determine data? We have engine, we run the function in Frankfurt, let's say, and we measure round trip time, only that. Black box testing from outside. It's easy if I go in the code and put uh, measurement. Yeah, but it takes time, right? How can we do from outside? We run round trip time, we measure round trip time. In the model, we have overheads for Frankfurt and for Tokyo. We have round trip time. We can estimate execution time for this function. And then we apply this execution time in Tokyo for the twin. We, how can we uh, calculate round trip time in Tokyo? round trip time in Frankfurt minus overhead in Frankfurt plus overhead in Tokyo. 
How can we estimate here? We had we used scaled speed up uh, um, equation, which not always works, but uh, this should be measured for th this four siblings. We don't have much uh, accurate model because uh, it depends on the application. And then we extract, we find out uh, the, the execution time, and then we multiply with the scaling, and we keep the same overhead again because it's in the same region. And for this, we used uh, different uh, uh, three regions to learn and then apply to other three regions, and there was no difference in the accuracy. So really, we can apply the model. This is how we, we learn parameters. So we determine for all these Amazon, IBM, and uh, Google, all parameters are, found, uh, are determined, and then overheads. And accuracy is really, really good. So just I would maybe skip some. OK, this is the accuracy. Just to mention, let's say, in London, we have very uh, low accuracy or higher inaccuracy. This is IBM London. They uh, offer free, free execution here. So we believe that this is the reason. And also higher, higher inaccuracy is uh, closer regions because even few milliseconds uh, mistake, it will create a higher uh, inaccuracy relatively. OK, then these are workflows that are used, for example. And uh, we can see that we tested uh, with low inaccuracy, with low, uh, uh, with low concurrency, and then applied for higher concurrency. So we run Monte Carlo with 10 functions, and we can estimate Monte Carlo with 1,000 functions. The, and, and here is the, the, uh, the yellow is inaccuracy, so 5 to 7 percentage. And this is BWA workflow, the second one. We s you see how accurate we go uh, when we increase the number of functions. Even with 500 functions, we are still, uh, uh, we are, you see, it's, it's rising. So we model the concurrency uh, uh, fine. And finally, knowing now the parameters of, of uh, FAS, can be used now to improve the performance of the applications. So that would be the, the final research question which I present today. Can serverless workflow applications benefit from executing individual functions across different FAS systems in federated FAS? So we have the workflow management system. It doesn't need to be ours, but uh, in my opinion, we are advancing uh, a lot uh, to run any function everywhere. And uh, can we improve the performance with, with this? So what is the state of the art in scheduling in this case? Main, there are million works uh, that, schedule, uh, that schedule workflow applications on virtual machines. I don't know. Each year, 20, 30 papers would, would uh, appear. And they would improve maybe a few, uh, um, few uh, percentages. Now, uh, scheduling in serverless workflows cannot be applied directly in FAS. Why? If we have a task, uh, virtual machines are uh, very flexible. We can install any operating system, any Java, whatever we need, and we can run the, the, the any task there. In FAST, that's not possible. In FAST, we put the code there, and then we only can run the code. We cannot select now uh, uh, run the code here or there. We need to deploy functions. So the problem is in FAST, when you deploy the code, you, you have to specify run my code with 128 megabyte. In virtual machine, the machine is already uh, determined so that you can move in another machine. In, in other words, usually, for example, for heft, for, for scheduling, heft needs two iterations. Iterate over all tasks and then iterate over all uh, resources. In fast, we need third iteration. I show you uh, later. So this is not directly uh, uh, used. In fast scheduling, usually schedule, they schedule individual functions on open source uh, fast platforms, let's say OpenWhisk. And uh, what uh, we want, we want if we have a, a, a workflow, one option is run full workflow in one region. If we, have, if we don't need to go above the concurrency limit, this may be it's the best. If we, uh, shorter is in Frankfurt, we run full workflow in Frankfurt because maybe data is in Frankfurt as well. Then 
one option is, can we split a parallel loop of 1000 into two parts so that we reduce the concurrency overhead? That's, that's another uh, option. And the third option would be fully distribute all functions everywhere. Now, what is good in both cases, what is bad? If we do this way, we cannot achieve higher, uh, higher concurrency because if function two and three run in parallel, then this would cause 1,200 functions to run in parallel. And then this will fail, or it will be slower. It needs two iterations. However, if this runs in a single uh, region, then all data would access to the same storage. That's, that's good. And bad was low concurrency. In this case, if we, if we have uh, uh, this distribution, then this function runs on IBM, we need the previous library. We need a library to tell this function, move the data on, on Amazon, and then this function to read from Amazon. Or keep the data in, in IBM and set this function to access to IBM Cloud. This we don't have, but with our library earlier, we can do that. So, so with, with including library in this approach, we can maximize the performance. We can dynamically and this opens a new research, I would say. At the moment, we test, it, we test only with brute force just to find that it makes sense. But uh, uh, in general, uh, this, is, uh, this is the idea now to, to continue using libraries. And uh, uh, we have three workflows al already prepared. And now we are going into that direction. How we do this? We want the coder, the developer of the workflow, to code only this. And then with the service that I mentioned earlier, we can split to this and then set each function simply with one line of code and to, to do this auto, uh, automatically. So code the application without resources and then leave the runtime system to adapt the workflow uh, as this and then to run it. So I have two, but, uh, two abstraction levels. One is what should be executed. The, the business guy, the domain expert would know that. And then the expert in optimization, how I should run this, uh, 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 that would be needed. How to do this? I mentioned that uh, the problem is that we need additional uh, loop in the, in, the, in, the, um, in the algorithm. So let's say we have R regions, a concurrency limit uh, in each region. 1,100 functions in, in parallel. And then, therefore, we defined abstract resource. So in each region, we have concurrency limit abstract resources. We don't see the resources now, 128 megabytes, three CPUs. That's not existing in, in FAS. And how, how to do? If we have, let's say, a workflow with two functions, split and index, and we need to run three functions of split and two functions of index, one after the other. Or, or at the same time, it doesn't matter. Yeah, let's assume at the same time. And then if we have already one function that runs here and in the other region, two functions are already running, those are abstract resources. We can scale up to 1,000, no matter if we run this or this. In VMs, this, this is not uh, exactly that way. So if we decide that function deployment one runs on, takes abstract resource one, and then function, uh, where is the other split uh, runs here. So those, that function deployment will be executed twice. This function deployment has to be executed here or better to be executed here rather than to wait there another abstract resource to be released. And here is the, the loop. I will not go, just check line four. So for I one to N, iterate over each function in the workflow or iterate over each task then iterate over each function deployment. So select for, which, for that function. Let's say this function is deployed in uh, one region and in another region. Here could be also, so these are maybe twins. Uh, here maybe I have another sibling and so on. And then apply the knowledge with the, with the model and iterate over all twins and siblings of that function and then iterate over each abstract resource to see earliest finish time. This is adapted heft uh, for FAS. And with this, just to summarize, I, I think I'm on time. 
just to summarize which scenarios are, to give you more uh, regarding the interoperability and portability. Which scenarios are possible? Let's say we would like to switch provider of a single <coughs> function from one to another provider. And that is fast portability. Then maybe we would like to switch provider of a function that uses some service. Let's say this is Monte Carlo. It, it is isolated. It runs only, it reads the input, uh, computes and returns. Does not use any cloud service. So this is pure fast portability. If a function uses some cloud services, then we need option to move that code to another provider and also to, to keep the code on the same place but change the service. So fast portability, move the fun function on another provider or keep the function in Tokyo but uh, move the storage, let's say. Then switch provider of the workflow instead of using our AFCL or, or step functions, we may want to move. That's not possible. Therefore, we, we, we uh, created our own language uh, so that uh, we don't need to port a full workflow. There is some option, uh, Apache uh, was workflow, I think Apache, Apache workflow, I think was. Amazon and Google offer to run uh, 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 Airflow, Airflow, Apache Airflow. Apache Airflow is a language which, uh, sub which is supported by Amazon and Google. So this exists now. They started this year to, to support uh, portability per workflow. And then you can check. So uh, we can mix functions of multiple providers in the same workflow. This is interoperability per workflow so that the workflow can change functions or can change providers. This is done with our language. Uh, then. Uh, Switch provider of a simple service. Can we keep the function and uh, switch uh, from Google Vision to Amazon recognition and so on. So these are scenarios which we would like to have. And uh, this is what we have. For fast, for function, for workflow, and for backend as a service, interoperability and portability. These approaches are neither portable nor interoperable. Let's say, AWS, Lambda, we cannot port immediately. We need some additional place. Uh, what are the portable solution? I would recommend, let's say, SAF. SAF, serverless application analytics framework, serverless analytics application frame framework. They wrap the functions code with the specific handler and then you can run on, on, on uh, the other provider. But this works only for isolated functions. That's why I mentioned. Then Terraform, yeah, we can deploy every, everywhere. So there are portable options, but not interoperable and not uh, portable and interoperable in both cases. So this is missing. Then interoperability and portability per workflow. Let's say interoperability is uh, Azure Logic or Google uh, workflows, but portable and interoperable also exists our, with our uh, uh, AFCL, we can uh, use this. And uh, also backend as a service, uh, we miss interoperability also here. Or to summarize, for fast interoperability, we lack. Also for bus interoperability, we lack. And for at, at the workflow level, we have both portability and interoperability at the moment. And one more slide and I'm done. What is the next step? Uh, using the library, Using this copy approach and, uh, 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 and uh, um, let's say recognition and uh, so on, use those libraries and then dynamically determine where to run functions and where to store data. Not only where to run function. This is missing and this is our next step to, to do also together. And next one, just, do I have one minute more? Maximum. Well, I, I think it's good. Uh, the, the yesterday there was OBB strike. In Innsbruck, we didn't have enough buses and uh, trams because the drivers could not come to Innsbruck. Now, can we apply this knowledge from here into the real problem? If I have a function in uh, Tokyo, but I don't have in Frankfurt. So the drivers were at home but could not come in Innsbruck to drive. Instead of sending 
few drivers to drive buses in the Innsbruck, in Innsbruck, they should send buses to bring driver more drivers and then to, to, to lose a little bit time in the morning and then later to have more. So can we use this approach again? Uh, uh, if I don't have some function in, in Frankfurt, shall I deploy in Frankfurt and run it or immediately run the one that I have? So also we, we are doing now the model how much is the deployment time in, in Frankfurt or in Tokyo. Okay, that, thanks for the attention. Now, if you have some Thank questions, you, I would be happy to answer. So, a lot of information we received in this talk. I'm sure you have a lot of questions now. Yeah, I can share slides if you, if you need. Uh, yes. Klaus. Yeah, thanks very much for an interesting talk. Uh, you mentioned thanks. for this execution, this better component that you run at Innsbruck University, mm -hmm. that this is kind of a bottleneck. So I wonder why not run why not running it also directly in the cloud or maybe several different redundant uh, instances of it? Yeah, good good question. That that is I think the challenge, because then we will we would need to split the workflow. If if I if I if I send this part to 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 the engine which is placed in Tokyo then running uh, 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 Tokyo, Tokyo will be much lower. Then the overhead will be much lower. But then I have to parse the workflow and uh, do compiler. For this, I need compiler to, to, to not only split, let's say, in this way, but also to, to cut uh, parts of the, of the workflow to send so that, uh, let's say, this chunk of the workflow fully sent in Tokyo and then run all, let's say, not this one, but yeah, here. So cut this part and send the YAML file to Tokyo with the input and then Tokyo engine there would run that. That's, that's, that's true. This is what, what our reviewers also asked to, to comment in, in our simulation paper. That was the same uh, comment. But of course, just to, to comment, not, that was not a weakness. Uh, yeah. But that would be required. And also more clever scheduler would be needed in this case. A question or yeah. with regards to the interoperable uh, uh, function as a services. Uh, mm -hmm. How does it work? Wouldn't you need, in essence, also some superset of parameters which then uh, which have to be derived for all services and then only some of them are, are applicable for a special set of services? In essence, mm -hmm you have also a big problem with, with that, that most likely Google and Amazon use different parameters for their FAS functions. For FAS, they use only different, uh, for FAS is easier. For FAS is really more interoperable. Th they have interoperability because inputs to each function are uh, JSON. So if we invoke function on Google and on Amazon, we invoke the same way with the same input. That, that is so easy. It's the same input format, but let's say the code is not the same. The code is, is uh, you need to, ch to write different uh, uh, handler methods in Google and Amazon. And this is what I mentioned, this with SAF tool. Uh, uh, this SAF tool does this wrapping. Uh, 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 you code the function once locally, and then this SAF tool would create wrappers for that. But that's the easiest part. That is not, that's one line you change. Th 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 this I don't see as a problem. This is solved. The, the problem is the function inside, if the function access to S3, this you have to change to, to, to run on Google. Or if you use Boto3 for Amazon to, to easier, for easier access to S3, and you move that code to, to Google, that code will not work on Google. So, so uh, wrappers at top of the code are easiest part. More challenges, even the the worst is the worst is this one: bus interoperability. Amazon, I don't remember which one was exactly. Amazon recognition returns you confidence seventy percentage. Google returns you uh, confidence high. This is how to make it interoperable. So we made our own, okay, more than 80 percentage is high on Google and this is what we did. That was the difficult to, 
to do in this uh, uh, this function returns uh, uh, high or low because of, of Google and Amazon return different values. Also the challenge is, uh, uh, let's say, for, for uh, what is the fresh, uh, Google supports less options, less file types than Amazon uh, to convert speech to text. Only MP3, let's say, while Amazon offers more. And then how to unify this? This is what we do now at the moment. Uh, and to give, uh, to, to, give to, the, to the developer, give me what you want, which file, and then I will return. You don't need to read in the background w w which cloud provider supports that. I have it in the library. Of course, if they don't change. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I mean. Because like, if you have used, for example, like uh, uh, image to text service or speech mm -hmm. to Exactly, yes. Set, and mm -hmm. then, of course, you have to somehow come up with a superset of yes. them. Yes, we, we create a union. Stuff, exactly. Things won't work for Google, which will work for Amazon. Which yeah, Amazon. this we want to do in the background so that the, the developer doesn't care about who, 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 who works what, who, where, where, which, which provider supports that. Give me what you want. I will make a middleware which will uh, uh, do this. Yes, that, that, that's that's what we we are doing exactly. Yeah. yeah thank you very much for these very interesting insights. Yeah, thank you. I'm not an expert in the field, and I hope my question is not naive. But I'm asking it, <laughs> nevertheless. Mm -hmm. Um, isn't uh, authentication across all these different systems a fundamental problem? You mentioned authentication as an factor in the overhead, mm -hmm. but since, say, you're very agile in terms of deployment, that might really get a significant factor then to authenticate against all the systems there okay. in terms of uh, methods, in terms of costs, in terms of time taken mm -hmm. for, for authentication. Yes, we measured in this case the time. Uh, in our engine in our system we authenticate for each execution on Amazon because Amazon requires this we, we follow authentications which are provided by by the cloud providers Google uh, 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 offers authenticate once with the token and then uh, uh, the next period you are authenticated already so I think this we cannot change Th this is uh, this is uh, limited to to cloud providers but also they offer multiple ways of authentication. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not that uh, only token, we, they have also some service uh, ID. So, so they also offer different uh, uh, options for, 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 for authentication. But what, what, we, what we measured is, let me go just to, for the time. Uh, no, it was model later. Here. Authentication is for two-way authentication. Three times, three packets are sent to the, uh, how was the request, then reply, acknowledgement, uh, uh, three, three way, three, uh, two-way authentication requires three iterations. So uh, uh, three times we need to send packets to the provider. And for IBM, for example, is one-way authentication which requires two network overheads, two times, uh, two packets to be sent. And we model this, we determined, uh, okay, for Amazon is this, for IBM is this, for Google is only, <laughs> only this. Because w once we, uh, the first execution on Google will t would take three seconds to authenticate, and then zero. That, so, but this we cannot, uh, uh, we cannot change this. We have to authenticate, otherwise we cannot run the, the function. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, this is this is, this the is the for the time. Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah, but but we cannot avoid that. And what, yeah, of course not. Uh -huh. yeah. What percentage does it take if you have very agile workflows? Uh, this is uh, to Frankfurt. Why well, I have numbers? Forty seconds. Thirty. Where is here is thirty seconds is uh, Innsbruck, Frankfurt. 140 to North Virginia and uh, 267 to Tokyo. From from uh, to to this is network overhead and authentication overhead is almost one second. Yeah. 
to Tokyo. So if we run five times each the same function, then five seconds we will lose to authenticate. It's a major part of the Yes, system. yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. We could reduce this if we don't, out if we, we can authenticate to Amazon only once and then uh, uh, run more. But uh, we did this way so that we have fixed model uh, to, to be accurate. And you see, uh, as I mentioned, Google requires overhead to, to Tokyo 300 milliseconds, mm -hmm. which is, uh, or let's say, uh, uh, North Virginia 154, which is less than 220 to Amazon Frankfurt. So although this is far away, it's faster to, out in, to, to have over, 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 uh, uh, overhead. Thank you. Uh, thank you for yeah. your nice presentation. Yeah, thank you. Um, my question is about the two terms that you mentioned in your slides, the about the twin and siblings. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I guess that we need two more terms for the, uh, the uh, workflow as a parent and child. Yeah, what parents what? and child for the workflow that you ah, mentioned. Ah, yes. <laughs> and, uh, okay. and I think that uh, for... Uh, you know, uh, measuring and monitoring resources on different provider, you need to have another uh, controller or server to measure the resources. And in mm -hmm. the, I'm curious about the time that you measure these resources in the time manner, in the time slot manner. And this is, uh, this is uh, something that imposes delay or uh, some critical parameter on your approach or you have the resources in background and you do offline. Uh, yeah, uh, to learn these values, yeah. these values to learn, we needed 240 executions only, which takes five minutes. But it doesn't change in during the time? It can change, yes. And then but we you need to repeat we it again. To run again. But then once we have these values, we need only these values. Simulate the overhead. And if you run the function what you want, you need to run the function only once in, in Frankfurt, let's say, which is the closest. But these values are valid for a specific time and then for the next iteration you need to yeah. measure them yeah. again. But, but we need to measure 240, not 1 million. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the idea. Because otherwise if we, if we, we need to run this one, this one, this one here more or other, Instead of that, we need to run only this one now. Mm -hmm. Five times we run, we exclude one, the first one, which is cold start, and from the four, ex four executions, we, need we measure only this. And uh, this is for the concrete function, only once. And for the model, for the model, we, we execute it in three regions of the three providers. Yeah. And we, we run no op function because we need only overhead to measure. I don't need to spend uh, uh, resources for, for to learn overhead. Because in our model, we split these two which are independent. Mm -hmm. And in the model I learned this with 240 executions and I need to run this on one region only. Yeah. Okay. What is the problem here? What is now the next step just to mention, just not to be we need to redefine twins definition exactly for what if this function uses storage and i move there this if this axis is here then they are not twins yes so what what is the plan now to do also with with radu is execution time to split to split this one as a download time plus compute time plus upload time and then compute time will be the twin because the compute time here and here will be the same, but download and upload time will be different. And yes. if we model this now, then I can model that uh, uh, execution time again. But that is the next step yeah. now, now. What but I, I think assuming a one central server uh, can continue with this idea, but having multiple server to dispatch this function is something this, this else. This complicates. Yes. It's yes, very yes, complicated. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. But the idea is that uh, I run on one place. If I have a complex uh, uh, solution, then I need synchronization. Then yes, it, it opens, yes. I think, more problems rather than benefits. Yeah. 
This is my opinion. And the last uh, thing, that's, it just has an uh, idea that I mm -hmm. think that here we can use reinforcement learning because the uh, you know, reward yes. function is yes. very clear and mm -hmm. we can yeah, yes. distribute I think, yes. the re reinforcement mm -hmm. learning. Yes. Thank you. J just uh, what can cause problems, if you run this function first time, it will provide three seconds execution time mm -hmm. because of the cold start. Yeah. And then next execution will be 300 milliseconds. Then if you run 300 functions in parallel, then execution time would be one second yeah. for one function. For other function will be uh, uh, 950, 920. So you will have really big, uh, 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 how it's called, range, of, range of, of, of different yes. values. Yes, yes. So it is challenging, but I think it can be applied. Yeah. That's because you. if when I run the workflow, let's say, I don't know how many functions in the background are running also there. So, so this also, I don't know if it, if it will be a cold start or warm start. Yeah. But I guess uh, prediction can learn that. Exactly. I, I haven't tried, but I think it should, it should be Very able. Very nice problem. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Joseph. Hi. Thank you very much for the presentation as well. Um, I'm wondering, you're here talking, I see mostly about time, but uh, I'm worried um, how do you uh, f measure the costs or how do you consider the costs that occur when you uh, transfer data cr between clouds uh, across the world, etc. So that's also some load that you generate. I mean, of course, you only focus on your personal outcome, but also in the general thing, I mean, you're sending a lot potentially a lot of data for nothing, basically, uh, just to increase a little bit of performance. And I'm wondering, that also has some overhead. And in particular, how do you avoid that you have additional costs for the user um, yes. if that transfer costs? I mean, this abstraction is nice, but um, how can you, uh, do you consider in the background to avoid those things? At the moment, not. At the moment, I don't consider cost. My goal is to make the, the uh, the, the thing faster. Within the model, the cost, the cost depends on this. So we pay how, uh, how much time the function runs. For this, we don't pay. Uh, uh, this is not running the, co the function. So overhead, we eliminate the cost. Uh, wha uh, when do we use resources at the cloud when the function runs? So the, for computing resources, we pay based on this. So I can estimate the cost, but I don't optimize based on the cost. The scheduling at the moment does not consider this, but for the, just to give you hints for the model. So if the function is isolated and does not use any cloud service, then this is the cost. If the function uses cloud services, then addition to this, we need to, in, to uh, add in the overall cost, uh, costs for cloud services. For example, each invocation of uh, um, uh, recognition ser uh, service, you pay for invocation for using the service and also you pay for the used resources for the, for the function. And you're right, if, if, we, if these two functions use storage and the storage is here, cost here is zero for data transfer. Any outgoing traffic is charged, any outgoing. If function uh, uh, uploads data to storage, uh, function is charged. If, if the function downloads data from storage, then the storage cost you get is a storage cost. If, if, if they are across the regions, if they are in the same region, you don't uh, 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 pay anything for the data transfer. If you transfer data from Amazon to Amazon regions, again, you are charged, but less than if you move data from Google to uh, uh, to Amazon. And this data transfer I mentioned, it's in dollars, not in cents or, or, or parts of the cents. It's really, if you move, I don't know, w one of the workflow, uh, this BWA generates one gigabyte per execution, and uh, I run with 125 uh, samples, that was 1,000 functions, I got $20 charge for one execution. So it really generates a lot. Because it, it charges twice. 
uh, uh, because the function downloads from storage, then it charges the storage. And at the end, the function stores to storage, then it charge the, charges the, the function. So for each upload and download, they charge. And it's, <laughs> I think, a lot. I mean, OK. <laughs> so, so for the cost at the moment, we don't uh, consider this. But that is the model, just to, to give you insights. You want to have one more? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, just one more thing. Um, abstractions in general are very, very nice, and we all want that. I'm just wondering how much performance you lose because of that. Because, um, I mean, for example, Java is very nice, but if I want performance, I use C++. Something like that. And uh, also with machine learning, I can use machine learning anywhere, but if I use it on a GPU, it's better. If I use it on a very specific GPU, it's even better. Um, so how do you deal with that? I mean, with the abstraction, how precise or how detailed can you get with that to not lose too much we performance? Measure some parts. Let me say first for the... Languages. Three. Okay, never mind. Mm, I had somewhere. Okay, doesn't matter. We have this with storage with three languages: Java, Python, and Go. And for for Go, we got the the best paper. Now in Java, overhead was negligible, but in Python was very high. So if we don't use our library, we lose performance for upload download uh, with the file. But it's not about the, the library, but uh, in the background we use Apache uh, LibCloud. That causes the problem. I mean, I don't want to say, no, it's not my cause, but uh, it creates, it creates, but I think from the different perspective. Let's say in Go, we use SDKs from the cloud providers and we don't have any problem because we do the same. Overhead is less than one percentage. I, I, I think it's, it's negligible if you use SDKs in the background uh, from the providers. So negligible is uh, uh, this. Also is negligible, uh, uh, start time of the function is, is a little bit higher because the size of the code grows. Now we use only two providers, Google and Amazon. If we use five providers, probably it will be uh, even higher. But uh, the, the developer can, can decide use only we can make uh, uh, libraries for specific provider or for each pair of providers and then to reduce the size still. So that you don't need to load uh, all uh, libraries uh, for all providers if you don't need them. But what we gain with the, with the dynamicity, it's really uh, good. Because to deploy functions, you would need one, two, three seconds on Google, two minutes. And that's, that's I think... <laughs> overcomes everything, <laughs> justifies our work. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah, it creates a, but negligible. In, in general, for two clouds, it's a negligible. Yeah. Okay, I close with my question. So, yeah. I like in general your work, you know, it, it's very appealing to our community because in the systems community, you know, we like practical solutions. So, you, you are doing it very fine and, you know, all this conferences and awards, but there is another, you know, um, metric that we used to evaluate research, which is called test of time. I'm challenging, you know. Yeah. So you have this snapshot of today, you have Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and then they compete, they are not compatible, and, you know, mm -hmm. everything is, you know, a mess, and then you come with your solution in the middle, you build bridges, they work today, but what about the time? I mean, after will one your month, after one year, I don't know. You mean yeah. in after some test time? of time means your solution will stand the test of time, like being valid in 10 years from now. I think it will not be. Because so providers intentionally to keep the, 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 to lock the users, they will create, I think, uh, in each three months, they, they create new runtime for Java, new runtime for, for Python. After, after two years, let's say, I think now 3.7 or what was the last, uh, the lowest uh, library of Python which is supported. After two years, they will support maybe maximum Python 4. So, so the providers will change, of course. Yes, that, 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 uh, but uh, the idea is that once we rebuild our libraries, then 
the user still can run the newer, uh, 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 the newer languages. It will be supported. And I think it, this, this idea does not require, it's a three bachelor thesis. It's, it does not require much work, but uh, it's really beneficial. So you have a sustainability plan for your, yes, for yes, your yes. Uh, mm -hmm. so you know, re, re, I mean, I can imagine for every new release that, you know, these providers are, are offering, probably you need a new backend. I, I think it's the same like in lottery. They change after two years, the number three of 50, 10 of, of 20, just to change the logic so that you cannot use prediction. So they do the same, I think. They, they will change something just to, so that you have to use their own. <laughs> to keep you busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I okay. <laughs> it's my view. Yeah, this is only my only worry when I mm -hmm. look at your work. It's great, but you know, the test of time is it's something that's hard. Yeah, that's true, I mean. But it's the same, you, if you code a Lambda function in Java 8, they have support. Next year, they will not support Java 8. So even without the system, you have the same problem, I would say. So that problem exists anyway. <laughs> so that's, that's yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Sashko, again. And thank uh, you for the invitation. Thanks for the attendance. And if you need some question, please, here is my email. You can write me an email and I would be glad to answer anything.